focus of the report was to explore how to diversify the energy base in the world's transportation system and at the same time to reduce the overall amount of energy used to power transport. So specifically we looked at three key technology enablers. We looked at policies, partnerships, and financing mechanisms. Subject is important because the current system is simply not sustainable. There's a very strong nexus between transportation and energy. So more than 96% of the world's transportation system is powered by oil and more than 60% of the world's oil consumption is used to power transportation. So moving forward, the issue is that we're projecting extremely strong growth in consumption of mobility, in consumption of transportation. Uh, the projections are at least 40% growth over the next 20 years. So that's what we see with uh, very strong economic growth in countries like China, India, Russia, et cetera. And that's, that's what's, what's driving the, the significance of the subject. Well, let's take each of the technology enablers in turn. So policies, partnerships, financing. So for policies, much of the debate really focused on do we want technology specific policies sort of mandates for electric vehicle penetration and such or do we want more performance based policies and the subtlety of course is that we discovered you really want a mix of both uh, some countries have specific resource advantages so for example brazil where nearly 25% of their uh, energy for transport now is coming from biofuels that are derived from sugarcane, it makes a lot of sense to push for uh, sugarcane derived uh, biofuels in Brazil. Um, but it may not make sense for, for other countries. So the debate around policies was, was actually quite subtle. For partnerships, it was actually really exciting because now there's a, there's a tremendous number of very innovative multi-stakeholder partnerships that are forming in the transportation universe that we've never seen before. So just as an example, uh, Nissan with the launch of the LEAF, their new electric vehicle, when they started paving the way for this, they started actually working partnerships with city governments around the world. Uh, partnerships that would focus on you know, how to enable the charging infrastructure uh, within an urban context. We never saw that before. We never saw large automotive companies forming a partnership venture at the municipal level before. And that's just one of many examples of these types of sort of innovative multi-stakeholder partnerships that we've seen. So actually one of the things that the project revealed is that a lot of executives don't have a sense of what's going on out there. There's so much happening right now. So we put together a database that captures many of these multi-stakeholder partnerships. So for financing, I think that's actually where some of the most interesting findings of the report are. What we found, we did analysis of different scenarios and we determined how much incremental investment would be required to actually reduce oil consumption in transportation over the next 20 years. And what we found is the amount is significant. It would require on average about $400 billion per year over the next 20 years. A very large amount of money. But the actual sources are spread over uh, many different players. So from uh, governments, from industry, from consumers. And more importantly, if you compare that amount to the amount that we spend each year globally for oil subsidies, the International Monetary Fund estimates that amount at $740 billion per year. So relatively speaking, it's, it's actually doable to, act to, in the end, reduce oil consumption in transportation over the next 20 years. Well, all of our analyses indicate that oil will continue to be the dominant fuel 
for the global transportation system over the next 20 years. Now, that's not to say long term we may see an entire shift away from oil, but at least for the next two decades, oil will be a key player. I think what's important about the report is that it shows that despite the tremendous increase in demand for transportation over the next two decades, we can still actually reduce overall oil consumption. And that's, I think that's an important finding. So as far as where we go next, uh, the past year in the initiative we've worked predominantly with transportation and energy players and other business players. I think the next step is really to further engage governments into the finding and the analyses of the report.